Welcome to The People's View, a program dedicated to discussing local, state, and national issues and their effect on the American people. The People's View provides a platform for state representatives and national figures to present their viewpoint. Whether it's social, economic, or financial topics, you'll hear it on The People's View. Hello and welcome to The People's View. I'm Carl Seidel, our host, and we're now talking with Dan Moriarty, uh, the alderman from Ward 9. And Dan's going to talk about some of the uh, budget uh, in our city and some of the uh, topics that uh, go on at the meetings. Dan, where do we start off? We want to start off with the railroad issue that uh, came up last week. Uh, and uh, where do we stand on that? The resolution was tabled. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Alderman Dean was polite enough to keep it from being squashed uh, permanently by tabling it, but uh, I haven't given up. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I didn't, I certainly didn't expect the resistance that I got, and so I, I, I take the blame for not sort of championing it enough in advance. What, tell us uh, why people were reluctant. I mean, your idea was to have an ad hoc committee look at it from the perspective of the city of Nashua uh, mm -hmm. and, and look yeah. and make sure that your concerns are being addressed by this review that's being done by the state? Right. There are, there are several aspects. Uh, it, the, the, I, so I'll work sort of backwards. In, I, I, I wrote an, edit, uh, an editorial. Actually, it was a response. It was a letter to the editor in response to the union leader's editorial, and it, was, it ran yesterday, I believe. Um, I had three main reasons, but working backwards from that, the idea was, was suggested to me. Um, so I'm not going to take credit for the whole thing, although I definitely support it, and I, I wrote the legislation. But the idea was suggested that by someone who has a lot of experience in rail, has been uh, on state-level committees and a businessman, that there's a lot of stuff that the, the city of Nashville needs to do now mm -hmm. already, given what we know. The Board of Aldermen needs to, is going to need to prepare some legislation, uh, and it's going to, I believe, need to, it would be helpful if the Board of Aldermen was creative in ways to finance it that did not require statewide taxes, mm -hmm. because that's one of the biggest problems with, with uh, commuter rails. It's perceived negatively as needing subsidies and being a burden. Um, so it was suggested, let's get an ad hoc committee together um, a few aldermen, but mostly invite a lot of other people in, mm -hmm. volunteers, people who know more about this than mm -hmm. I do, and have them uh, work creatively to see if we can come up with a solution. Well, I think what you're saying, too, is the devil's in the details. You want to make sure that all the details are covered, all of a sudden, and you don't come across something later on. Uh, your concerns might be more prevalent to how it's going to work in, in, in Nashua, uh, and the other ones will be looking at the statewide issue of the yes. rail. Yes. And uh, I know when I was up there, that was one reason I voted against it. It was they were trying to do everything all at once, and you can't support something like that. Right. I liked the mayor's idea. She was working with the MBTA, bring it up to Pheasant Lane, see if you get it to work there. Then you can go into Nashua and maybe right. up to the airport is the next step, not all the way to Montreal or even Concord. Right. Uh, it's kind of hard to justify that uh, all the right. way down to Boston. And right. you don't need high-speed rail because it, the stops are only 20 th miles apart or something like that, you know, right. maybe 30, and you don't even get up to speed, and that's a little distance. So uh, that was one of my concerns. Uh, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Do we do it in phases, or do you try to get all that money. I mean, the, the money for any of those rail projects is unbelievably high because the, the tracks are old, the tracks have not been maintained as much. And it's not just rail, it's, it's you want to do something for the uh, companies that use uh, freight going on that uh, line. Mm -hmm. But is that the kind of things that you were concerned about? Uh, the the 
big picture of justifying whether or not rail should come or go is still a statewide issue. Mm -hmm. I'm still for it. I could, uh, with with several people's help, with I could uh, itemize a few reasons for it. Um, for a second, and let me mention that I think we all remember that th when the sequestration hit, mm -hmm. Nashville Airport was was doomed to be shut down, and it was. The, recently, we had uh, uh, a runway improvement project on that, which was was it twenty five million dollars? Well, I think at least half of that. Anyway. It was a lot of yeah, money. It's over ten million. E exactly, and so if you compare a small airport is. All transportation projects in the country are subsidized. Mm -hmm. None of them mm -hmm. bring a profit. None of them are self-sustaining, even highways. This Main Street in Nashua does not pay for itself. It's paid by tax dollars. So one of the things that would be that, that the, this ad hoc committee could do was to do a, get some people to investigate exactly how much are we paying in other projects if we wanted to, if somebody was motivated to, to champion the cause of commuter rail. So let's put that aside. Um, I'm an engineer, and I try to focus on the logistics and the mm -hmm. and 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 I'll make the assumption. Let's say commuter rail is going to be approved. If it is going to be approved, what does the city of Nashua need to do? Mm -hmm. And so again, it was suggested to me that to help alleviate a lot of the concerns of fun, of paying for it from a statewide hundred million dollars in capital and uh, twenty million dollars a year in operating expenses. What if Nashua at least could come up, uh, up with means to pay for its portion of it. Let the Manchester Airport come up with means to pay for its portion of it. Manchester, the city, and Concord. What if each of those major municipalities in, in the airport were to think among themselves to, uh, of ways of paying for their portion of it? Then suddenly it's an it's, it's a easier sell because now we're not trying to ask the public to fund a $100 million project if Nashua is willing to if the businesses that are going to benefit from the commuter rail are, if they're going to benefit from, from their via the increased mm -hmm. business, if they're going to help pay for it because they're the ones that are, are benefiting from it and you do that along the way. Sort of approaches like that. And so what is relevant to Nashua only? What obligations does Nashua have to do specifically? What are the obligations of the Board of Aldermen and how can we prepare ourselves? That's sort of the general approach. Have you asked uh, any of the well Chamber of Commerce if they to go along with some concept like that? Uh, I have, uh, especially uh, um, I, I, the Chamber of Commerce is definitely in support of of commuter of rail. Yeah, for, uh, I mean the, your approach, your approach yes. here, uh, the specifics breaking of breaking up the cost. I hadn't yet, and that was what and the things that I was going to do. That is a different idea the, that hasn't really been presented, in, to my knowledge, yeah, to everybody. Yeah, let the the. The, the people who are going to benefit from rail, mm -hmm. let them pay for it. I've, mm -hmm. I've spoken to um, you know, people like Mr. Law, who uh, owns warehouses and does transportation, and he's saying that it, it, there, there are businesses that are going to benefit from it, so let's talk to the businesses. And I've heard things like uh, you know, heavy, you know, freight is different than commuter rail, mm -hmm. but the improving the tracks to carry commuter rail ends up Improving the tracks to carry larger freight and improve, Definitely. improve freight. So, the um, th these were all topics that I was hoping to discuss once the committee was started. In fact, I said that day at the committee meeting, the first thing the ad hoc committee is going to do is determine, make a list of what it's going to do. And I expected people like. Uh, uh, Organizations like the uh, Chamber of Commerce and other Renaissance Nashua and other organizations, which I hope to endorse mm -hmm. it, I would invite them in. Now, what I'm going to need to do is invite them in to speak on behalf of the resolution, just to get it taken off the table <laughs> and get it get it approved. But that's my own mistake. So you're you're still uh, trying to get that support to bring it off the table and, and have it discussed, and now make the reasons for that more clear to the rest of the aldermen so yeah. that they see what purpose you had for doing this yes. and they can't say it's a waste of time. Right. First of all, it's not going to cost anybody anything right. to, do, to have this ad hoc committee. And that was the number one, that was the reason why uh, the editorial in the newspaper, the union leader had, had criticized it because it was going to cost. They didn't want to spend any more money. It's all volunteer. 
It isn't going to cost anybody anything. So, so I asked the question, Ed, is it going to hurt anybody? Mm -hmm. No, it's not going to hurt anybody to let us do this. Um, and so my, I hope getting back to the, the uh, legislation portion of it, the next personnel and administrative affairs committee meeting, which meets the last Monday of the month, I believe. I'm actually not on the committee, otherwise I'd have this memorized. It does kind of move around. I'll at least plan better this time and invite the people that have contacted me. Since the resolution got first reading, mm -hmm. I've had people contact me saying, can I be involved? I'd like to be on the committee. And I have told them, I'll be get back in touch with you. This time I'm going to ask them, can you please show up, speak in support of it? That's part of it. The other half is the, the one person on that committee, Personnel and Administrative Affairs Committee, that is a co-sponsor of this bill wasn't there that day. Uh. So he wasn't there to vote for it, and he wasn't there to speak on its behalf. So it, the whole thing was just a, a, a unfortunate. Well, it goes to show how much you have to do all this background work to get something through. You do any and, kind of political organization. And I totally <laughs> dropped the ball when it came to championing it and trying to because I didn't expect this back this kind of blowback on this. I didn't expect that at all. I guess I found out a few of those things <laughs> up in uh, Concord when I was up there too. Uh, yeah. Things that uh, I thought nobody would have any objection to, all of a sudden, out of left field came some objection. Now, uh, um, we're told not to, on the Board of Aldermen, we have a code of ethics. Yeah. And we're told not to, uh, to create arguments or, or state a position based on uh, an assumption of someone's purpose for making a statement as opposed to the statements themselves. You're supposed to argue the statements themselves right. and not their purpose for the making the statements. Um, if you were to ask a study or the, the act of, of investigating what are the city of Nashua's obligations, if the commuter rail were to show up, um, certainly the executive branch, the mayor's office, should play a strong role in doing that. So maybe some of the people on the committee felt that it should be left up to the mayor's office to take care of this. I certainly believe that we have the legislative branch and the executive branch, and the, the Board of Aldermen is obligated to think among themselves and have a committee among themselves and do the planning among themselves to find out what they have to do. The mayor's office has an obligation to do the same thing, and they both can work at the same time. Mm -hmm. And they should work uh, the same purposes, if ho hopefully. Uh, what happens with this uh, committee that's already set up uh, to do a review of all this? What what this kind of schedule? What are they? What are their objectives? Have they listed how they're going to approach this whole study? For the the, the statewide study, it's I I don't know, and that was one of the items I listed is what would our commuter what would our commuter rail feasibility ad hoc study do? One of them was interface with the state and uh, yeah. the state committee, and uh, uh, and another reason I mentioned why I would like to have this committee is because the the charter of Nashua. The Charter of the City of Nashua talks about the, the responsibilities of the, the mayor and the responsibilities of the Board of Aldermen. It lists some specific restrictions on the Board of Aldermen that individual aldermen have to be careful when they go out and, and do things because they can't work as an official representative of the Board of Aldermen without the endorsement of the Board of sure. Aldermen. And so I'll continue to do this if the, if the committee remains, if, it, if I fail to get it put, taken off the table, I'll still work on behalf of commuter rail. But I won't have the flexibility or the empowerment to be able to communicate represent, in a more official yeah. capacity yeah. represent the city at these things without that, that endorsement. And the same thing with the volunteers. To be able to send a volunteer up to Concord and say, can you, can you talk to this person on their own, they may have a hard time getting that information. But if they, if, if they can go up and say, I'm part of a, uh, the Board well, of I Aldermen. I would hope that state committee stops in Nashua and has hearings here as well as Manchester and uh, yeah. wherever they're going to have a stop. Certainly, I would, I, that, that's all part of what, what's the, what would this committee do? We'll make a list of what are we going to do. One of them would be to invite them down here. Mm -hmm. And I worked on a, a technology use ad hoc committee a year ago. It was just three of us. And one of the things we did is we made a list of what we're going to do. And then another thing we did is we invited in special guests. Sometimes volunteers only have an hour to give. Sure. 
So let them offer an hour. I don't, yeah. I don't require volunteers to come on the committee and you have to work every day. You know, if somebody wants to just come in and just give a presentation, fine. And, and before I forget, it's not all about pro-rail. Mm -hmm. I, I've mentioned to other people, and it, it wasn't written in the legislation itself, but I specifically will request that somebody who's not for rail participate. We have to, and if we're going to write a final report, I would like to have a people in, at work, we call it a red team, people who, who take the report and read it and review it prior to being submitted. I would specifically make sure I have somebody who's not pro-rail in order to have, make sure that their views are, are so that it's unbiased. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea. It's because this is, it's, you know, I look at it again as we have action items that we need to do. Well, this is a very, it's, it's, it's most, it's most, I, I should say is much, almost as much controversial as the gambling issue that's been there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, because it's, it's actually around the same dollar value, <laughs> a couple hundred million dollars. It uh, certainly is. The question is for the whole thing. Yeah. Well, I let's talk one. about money. Let's talk about <laughs> the budget. I mean, the, the budget's going up, uh, what, several hundred thousand dollars this year. It is. Uh, it, it, the proposed budget is, for all intents and purposes, I'm a realist, I'm an engineer. The budget is always going to go up at the rate of inflation. Mm. And why do I say that? Well, because it's capped. Uh, some uh, alderman had some foresight many years ago mm -hmm. that got through, uh, I don't know if it was a charter uh, uh, amendment or just mm -hmm. a resolution. The city budget is restricted as a spending cap. And as it is, there are a lot of things that the city needs to spend money on that it's not spending money on. The biggest example is maintenance, basic maintenance of the schools mm -hmm. primarily. Mm -hmm. uh, the schools need $6 million a year in maintenance. There's a lot of things that are not, that are deferred, they're not being paid for. So the budget will always, they're always, even if you cut, there's always gonna be something to take its place. But get, that being said, it's important to make sure that the things that we do spend the money on are mm -hmm. highest priority. Mm -hmm. So a quick review, I, I, I gave this review last time I was here, how big is the budget, what's it made of? Uh, go off uh, from memory, it's basically a $250 million budget. It was $250 million a year ago, and it's $250 million plus 2% this year. Is it 260? Is it 250? It depends on, there's some special revenue accounts like uh, uh, wastewater, mm -hmm. and some people count them, some people don't. Uh, they pay for themselves, but grand scheme of things, it's $250 million. Uh, the single largest department in the budget is the school system. It's like that all over the country. Mm -hmm. It's about 51% of the budget, and it adds up to about 140 million. The next three, possibly next four departments combined, can't pause, don't add up to, to the school budget, because mm -hmm. that's a, it's already 51%. Yeah. The next three departments themselves only add up to a quarter of the budget, so it's a very large portion of the budget. So that's how big it is. It's $250 million, half of it's school, and then uh, the next three are, are, board of, are Department of Public Works, fire, and police all add up to a quarter of it. And then there's debt service, and then there's uh, discretionary spending, very small point, mm, yeah. very small aspect of it. But the, what? Go ahead. The biggest change from last year to this year, which you might have read in the newspaper, uh, has to do with the bookkeeping of it. Mm. The, the dollar values aren't changing a huge amount. They're going up 2% or it's, it's projected to go up 2 or 3%. But it's the bookkeeping of the benefits and pension costs. Mm. So I've been complaining about this for, for months. Every time you read about, and I, I, I sound like I'm constantly attacking or harping on the school budget. I just use that because that's the largest portion of it, and I remember the numbers off, my top, off top, top of my head. But oftentimes we'll read that the school budget is a $96 million budget. You know, we read in the paper, the Board of Education has started a uh, discussion of the $96 million school mm -hmm. budget. It's $140 million. Because it's not 96 Because benefits, the benefits and yeah. pensions have always been accounted Separate. for in a d different item. Yeah. So this year, the way the budget's printed, the way it's documented, the account numbers, the way it's all listed was all changed. It's a completely new accounting system. And now the new way those $49 million worth of pension and benefits are now distributed amongst all the departments. 
And so now when you look at it, it, it schools 140 and fires 20. And the portion 20. has gone up a little bit, right? The, that, uh, so if state. you looked at just the 96 million, it looked like it was only 40% of the budget. Mm -hmm. If you count the actual fringe, in reality, it's always been 51% and it still is 51%. So that's the biggest change, which will make it a little difficult in some cases for the budget hawks to go through and find out you know, before and after. But that's just the transitionary thing. Mm -hmm. I like the style. I think I like the way the budget's written now. Uh, but it does make it a little difficult. So uh, what do you think, uh, are there going to be any problems? Are people going to see their taxes raised a lot? Or? Um, the projection is, of course, the estimates, the, the, the property taxes will go up 3%. Um, some people say that's small. Some people who pay them actually say that's a lot. The 3% is not a major deal if you only had to do it once, but if you keep doing it year after year after year, it adds up fast. Uh, but again, that's the, that's the budget. It's, it's, there's so many things that need to be uh, paid for, maintenance. That's, that's the big picture. But as far as specific issues, you're, really the question is, are, is there anything con contestuous? Uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Anything that's, that's uh, a controversial? Yeah, controversial. Um, let's, let's back up to Tuesday where we voted on four police union contracts. And uh, three of them failed, one of them passed. The reason they failed and the reason I voted against them uh, had to do with, in my opinion, and I said this, it had to do with an issue of uniformity. Fairness aside of them, them risking their lives as policemen, fairness aside of, of how, they, how much they get paid versus industry, I'll put all that aside. For now, let's just, just focus on uh, among all the union employees in the city, all, uh, whatever, 2,000 or 3,000 yep. employees there are, uh, 2,000, I believe. They all, 15 of all but four of them, all but five of them had already agreed to two major concessions. Mm -hmm. The number one is they're going to pay 20 to 30 percent of their health care premiums, depending mm -hmm. on the, the plan, retroactive to October of 2011. So all the other unions, some of them uh, settled on that early, some kept negotiating, and a year late and a half later they agreed to it, and they all paid retroactive to this one date. Except these three? Except these four. Oh, four. And there's one more that's outstanding mm -hmm. that hasn't yet agreed. That's the concession number one. Concession number two had to do with the, the size of their pay increases. All the other uh, contracts essentially were squeezed to no more than half a percent really? per year for three years. That's not much of a pay raise. No. And also, if you consider the fact that they paid their percentage of health care went up, their salary didn't go up, most of them, if not all of them, take home went down. That was just facts. That's life. Economy's bad. People uh, are lucky to have a job. I didn't mention this in the Board of Aldermen, but at VA Systems, they, their, their pension effectively ended last year. Mm. So I, I took a $7,000 pay cut mm -hmm. uh, or more, depending on how you do the bookkeeping. Uh, it, it was total benefits as opposed to take them. I take them, didn't go down. But still, I lost money on it. So I can sympathize with them, but I'm not going to use that as a justification for voting against it because I'm. Oh, yeah. the voting was uniformity. So why did I mention all that? We forced them to, to take the, the take-home pay reduction due to the health care and forced them to persuade it strongly for them to uh, restrict it to a half a percent. When I was asking, I was several people that I know that are union members, what they think about this contract, one of them pointed out to me the merit employees mm -hmm. got 3% raises. So I decided to take a look at it. And when the budget came out, and I was flipping, and sure enough, putting aside merit employees, which would be like the police chief, uh, fire chief, and those guys, office of the mayor, all of city hall, the directors, direct, were all getting three, four percent pay raises, huh. and the the top three, they over the past three years got eleven percent pay increase over three years. That's not right. No, no. <laughs> oh boy. So there's going to be make a the paper though. <laughs> there's going to be a firestorm tonight. Oh boy! Possibly. Yeah. Uh, the board. This budget is being discussed tonight. We're starting off with the mayor's office. Uh, we're starting off with city stat, and the city stat director got 
it was one of the highest, got 9 or 10 percent over three years. So I sympathize with, anyway, that, that's the issue. So we'll, I certainly, I don't have a voting, I, I'm not a voting member of the board of, uh, of the uh, budget review committee. So I can't make the motion. Mm -hmm. I can't vote on it. I expect a couple of the other members will make the motion and will vote on reducing the line item for the salaries to keep it within a half a percent per year. Well, good luck on that one. Yeah. And yeah. I know how hard it is. Uh, we had that dealing in the county uh, last year when I was uh, chair of the executive committee, and it was a tough, tough issue, and we turned down some of the uh, contracts then. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm not sure whether they've uh, ever voted those in uh, now uh, since then. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's an interesting, uh, and I guess uh, we have a full uh, contingent of the police force now too, don't we? Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that what I read in the paper? I think so. That, that uh, They came up in the last is, budget review. So, yeah, I mean, uh, they ought to be happy that everybody's there. And, uh, it's a good thing. And a full uh, yes. force. It's a good thing. And I imagine, uh, I haven't heard anything about the fire department. I imagine they're pretty pretty good as far as that's concerned. Yep, they, they, they did their best to make sure that there was, weren't a lot of delays in the outstanding uh, requisitions for uh, open jobs. That they yeah, were in the field again, of. it's just like the state. They have to learn what money's coming in, and that's all you get. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's right. all you can work with. That's right. That, that's true, and, uh, and, and I believe in, in uniformity, and then it becomes an issue of fairness. Fairness is hard, hard to define. Uniformity is easy to define, so I'm yeah. able to at least focus that. In this case, I think fairness can be brought into the picture. Of, well, I, I think you're going in the right direction. I hope yeah. uh, it all works out without yeah. a firestorm. We'll see. <laughs> well, one other thing before we go. Uh, you, uh, how's this, the whole deal working out with Penichuk? Is that working out? Uh, it, it is, and that, that's, uh, that was uh, a, a pleasant experience in the end, I'll have uh -huh. to say. Uh, there was a lot of work getting to that particular date. And what do I mean by that? Uh, the, I'll start from the, the, the end of the story was we had a meeting. It was the, the first official uh, shareholders meeting, first official annual shareholders mm -hmm. meeting with the city of Nashua as the sole shareholder was held. Uh, I expected more photographs and more glad handing. We sort of showed up, and it was very brief, uh, and then we left. Um, but getting to that point um, was, was a little bit of a struggle. Um, and what do I mean by that? Well, there was a, po a proxy that had to be filled out. Mm -hmm. and, and so a month before the shareholders meeting was scheduled, before I even knew it was going to be scheduled, um, the, in our Friday packet, we got a proxy statement with, uh, with a 50 pages of description of it. There were really, the issues were very simple. There was one contentious issue. It had to do with the board of directors on that. Mm -hmm. And so we got this. I was very pleased to have this, this in my packet um, because I had already, this, because I had been reading um, the, how do we go, I'd been reading in the newspaper about who's going to vote for, on the proxy. Who, who, who's the board of all of them going to send to the shareholders meeting to vote on their behalf? And I'm thinking, what do you mean we're going to send somebody to vote on their behalf? We're going to go and vote ourselves, aren't we? And so I started investigating, and sure enough, no one really knew, and it, it wasn't going to come up. So I quickly worked with the uh, legal department, which I get along with fine, and drafted a resolution uh, in haste over one day and was able to bring it in uh, to the Board of Aldermen meeting, uh, suspension of rules to get it in, get it first reading, in order to list, here's the sequence of events that will occur. Mm -hmm. First, we're all, the Board of Aldermen are going to discuss it, the proxy, we're all gonna vote on it, and then we're gonna mail it in. Okay, that way we can guarantee that the Board of Aldermen talk about it. Yeah. But not only that, more importantly, I needed to get it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I needed to have Prior to me introducing that resolution, the proxy was not on, on the Board of Aldermen agenda of discussion. Mm. It needs to get on the agenda to allow the public to come in and comment on it. So I was able to create the resolution to get it on the agenda so that it could be referred to committee, so we could talk about it and the public could come comment on it, so then it can go back for second reading at the Board of Aldermen so that we could make the deadline before it was due, okay? So that, that resolution ultimately got tabled 
in order to rewrite it as an ordinance. That was a good thing. We tabled it as a resolution, and it was felt by all that, that we, we like it. We're going to follow these process. This, we're going to follow this process, and let's make it a, an ordinance. It got promoted, and we'll get to that. So that was a lot of procedural machinations that I had to go through just to get it to the point for us to sit down and talk about whether or not we agree with it to this, this mm -hmm. proxy in the first place. So three of the items on the proxy were basically rubber stamp. Uh, the one that the only one that was contentious had to do with a nomination of a new person yeah. for the board of directors, and I voted no. And that nom that person, uh, the nomination of that person failed because uh, the, she worked. Uh, uh, Martha O'Neill was uh, previously on the board of directors for Penn and Chuck. Oh. The whole point why we bought. Penichuk in the first place was because they got they had such a reputation of being such scoundrels. For goodness sakes, why are you bringing, bringing someone, someone back. back from the past? Maybe she was fantastic. Everybody had glowing comments to say about her personally, but out of principle, for goodness sakes, you don't do that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, fortunately, I was able to get the resolution through, so we could have the discussion. We can talk about it, and there we were at that last day, uh, board of aldermen, and it was close. I was sitting there counting the votes as we were talking about it, and people saying no, 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 and then I can see a couple to my left, and she's like, okay, I'm no, and then I'm like, we got it. And so the people had a victory. Good, good. Well, you're keeping after them. You're keeping I'm trying, them, I'm trying. Which is uh, very interesting. We're going to have to have you back periodically just to keep uh, a okay. track of the uh, uh, board of aldermen and seeing what's happening behind the scenes a bit. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll find out. We'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks okay. on some of these objects. Yep, we will. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you, and thank you for listening in. And don't forget, the program is sponsored by the Nashua City Republican Committee, and we meet every second Thursday in the Crown Plaza if you want to join us or look at our website at nashuagop.org. Thank you for listening in, and thank you again, Alderman. You're welcome, Carl. Thank you.